Let's review J5Create USB-C Gen 2 docking station. This is Artist Right. Before we start, subscribe if you're new and hit on the bell icon so you'll be notified every time I upload cool new videos like this. J5 Creative sent me this dock for review. All the opinions you're about to hear are my own. I got turned on to the company a few years ago when we're at a convention center and we need to link a few Apple computers together into a network. I only carry one Ethernet dongle with me, so my friend's kind of stuck. What do we do then? Well, he has this Ultra Drive Kit USB-C multi-display modular dock in his bag and he was showing it to me, so we were using that. One of the modular kit that he has replacement for is an ethernet connection. He put that in, we're now in business, and we're able to link up and do what we need to do there without any problems whatsoever. Fast forward to today, I have been extensively reviewing the 14 and 16 inch MacBook Pro with the M1 Pro and M1 Max processor. On these computers, many of the tasks that it can do, it performs extremely efficiently and is faster than my Mac Pro. So what I wanna do is use this as my primary computer, which is the reason why you've been seeing a lot of doc testing videos and a lot of doc review on my channel because I wanna to try to find the best suitable doc. And I think I found one that works fairly well with the setup. So this is the J5 Crate M.2 NVMe USB-C Gen 2 docking station. And what's really cool about this, if you wanna use it with a new Apple computer, is that it's almost really just designed to match that. You can see that it's using the dark aluminum and matches perfectly. And what I really like about this dock in general is that once I put the computer on there, it lifts the computer off from the table and it creates more cavity on the bottom for heat dissipation. Not that these machines run really hot or the fan kicks on all the time or anything, but it's always good to have that extra room and have that extra kick up on the laptop itself. So the dock is fairly impressive. It has two USB type C connection that goes onto the left side of the machine, but if you happen to have a laptop that is a PC, a non-Mac for instance, and this port happens to be on the right side of the machine, they also include rubber feet that you can certainly put on to the back side of it so that your computer or your laptop can sit on the back side. And now this port is flipped onto the opposite direction. So I think that's a really clever design that covers bases for both Mac and PC and computers that have USB port on the left and the right side. Beyond that itself, the port does support a few things. So for instance, these are magnetically attached, meaning that you can split them apart like so. And essentially you can run this on a computer that has one USB type C port. If you do that though, they recommend that you plug in or reroute the port number two there onto the dock itself. And when you do something like that, only the HDMI connection will work where the display port won't work anymore. So it has something to do with like the ports itself and the limitation of a ship, but I think that overall, it's a pretty good system. So what ports does this dock has to offer? Well, one of them is a USB type C, 10 gigabits per second, which makes for a very fast transfer speed if you need to use something like that. There's one right there. There's also a USB type C with PDE power delivery coming in. So if you want to charge your laptop at the same time by just plugging these two cables in and have this dock also be powered, you can certainly use that. I have been testing this dock without any power or without PD power plugin. It works just fine. Yes, it will pull power from your main machine. So that's just something that you have to remember. And if you're the type of user who doesn't like to keep your machine plugged in all the time, then this may not necessarily be the dock for you because if you want to use this optimally, I would just recommend leaving all the ports and when you just come back to your computer, just plug it in. Beyond that, there are two USB type A, 10 gigabits per second connection, one that is five gigabits per second. So if you have a USB 2.0 or like a slower drive, for example, if you have like a Samsung T5, they can go up to 500 megabytes per second only. This may not be a bad port for you to use. It has an SD card and micro card slot, a gigabit ethernet connection, 4K HDMI and 4K full display port out from the dock. And it has a Kingston lock should you want to lock this up. Beyond that itself, there's one more thing on the bottom side that I think is really cool, and that is this slot. So it has a slot for an M.2 NVMe, and I'm gonna open this up. It comes with all the tools and all the screws you're gonna need to link it up and to lock everything into place. It also comes with thermal pad. However, what I find interesting about this is just the fact that when you put in the NVMe SSD right now, what you see in there, this is a Samsung 970 EVO Plus 2 terabyte. And the read and write speed for this drive 
um, they claim for this dock to be around, I would say 900 megabytes per second read and write or up to about a gigabyte per second read and write. Based on my testing, you do get that. This NVMe that I have is definitely much faster than that. So if you're using this as a storage device, one of the things that I probably would caution you is not necessarily to get the top spec PCIe Gen 4 because you're not going to see too big of a benefit from this thing in terms of speed. But if you just want storage on the device itself, I think that works really well. And this also has support for different lengths NVMe as well. The one that I'm using, I think the 2280 is the longest one that it will support. So it won't support any of the longer ones in here. And the one other thing about the screw itself is that um, the screwdriver is not magnetized. So your screws, the head will definitely drop in there. And that's just something to just keep in mind if you're using the one that's included in the kit. The other thing that I want to point out is that the NVMe itself sits fairly recessed, like about halfway down into the chamber itself. And this allows it very little heat dissipation from the aluminum cover that you're gonna put on there. So if you're using something like this, I would probably look at not just only putting, for example, a thermo pad like that, but also maybe like a low rise heat sink or something that you can put in to help dissipate heat from the NVMe SSD to prevent it from slowing down should you do a lot of read and write to it. Granted, the speed of read and write is not that high, so you may not run into the thermo throttling um, at any time at all. So you may be okay on that one, but I would definitely give your system a test to see how that performs. And what I'm gonna do in just a moment is set up this dock with two external displays that are hardware calibration capable and run the calibration to see if we're running any issues, if it's going to calibrate the display without any problems. A couple of things to note is that this entire dock is made out of aluminum, is really well constructed. There's two plastic pieces on the side, but this is not really going to break or anything like that. And it's really extremely sturdy. The other thing that you want to consider about putting an NVMe inside a dock like this is that it's light enough. You can carry this on the road with you and that would be a great dock to take. However, if you just want to leave this at your home, at your office, whatever that may be, and you put files on here, well, you can't really get to the files because it's not on your computer and this would just be in one location. You can certainly carry the dock, but it will definitely add on to the weight of the total computer that you have to carry. So there's a couple of give and takes and pros and cons that you might want to consider using an NVMe dock like this. But for me, I'm going to use this primarily just to hold the data that I'm using immediately while I have the machine linked to my workstation when I'm at the office. So it's not really a big deal. If you use this with a Macintosh computer, just be aware of the limitation for the different chipset. For example, the M1 Mac, specifically the laptop, for example, the MacBook Air, the MacBook Pro with just the M1 processor can only output to one external display. So even though there are two docks here, it won't necessarily work. And even though you have both of these plug in on the side of the device, only one connection will work at any given time. If you have the M1 Pro, you can use these two, but all the other connections on the device itself will be disabled. The only time that you can use these in combination with the output on the device is that if you have the M1 Max computer that has four external display outputs. So just a little caveat on that. I'm back from the setup. Let's do a quick orientation. I have my 16 inch MacBook Pro that is linked up to the J5 Create dock using the two USB port on the left side of the device. I have two BenQ SW hardware calibrated display, SW271 and the SW271C. Both of these are 27 inch 4K hardware calibrated display. And if you haven't following my channel, the best way to calibrate these display is to use BenQ Palette Master Element software so that you're doing a true hardware calibration. Based on my testing so far, I've calibrated both of these display off camera and they pass validation without any problem whatsoever. What you're seeing on the screen right now on the SW271 is the validation from this display. The other one passed as well. So everything is good. You can run a hardware calibration using this dock without any problems. Speaking of a dock itself, there are a few cables that I have linked up to this device. So I want to just quickly talk about them. One of them is a USB type C that's coming directly from the 140 watt power adapter is plugged into this dock right now. I have the Calibrite Color Checker Display Plus plugged into the device. I also have a USB uplink cable that is plugged into the USB type A port and the HDMI, which is linked up to the SW271 
and the full DisplayPort cable to full DisplayPort linking up to the SW271C. The only caveat about running these ports that are not USB Type-C connection is that if you want to run the calibration on them, you have to use a USB uplink cable. So for me, I have one USB uplink cable and I've been switching between these two displays. With the latest Palette Master Element 1.3.16, if you want to have two cables permanently link up to display, you can do that and directly link up to a dock, but you're really using up an extra USB port real estate on the dock itself. So I may not necessarily recommend that, but with those link up at the same time, 1.3.16 will recognize which display you want to calibrate or the versions before you just have to use a USB cable on the display that you want to run the calibration on. And with that out of the way, we just have to talk about one last thing is the fact that I have a two terabyte NVMe SSD inside this dock. Let's see if that will work out. So what we're going to do is open to the two terabyte NVMe SSD. I'm going to pull this onto the side. You can see that I have all my files there. It is linked up. It is working. So that's great. And what we're going to do is call up the disk speed test by Blackmagic Design. And we're going to see the performance. So I'll select the target drive. This is going to be the two terabyte NVMe SSD. I'll choose that. And what we're going to do is run the test with five gigabyte file first. And what we're getting from this drive in general is around a thousand megabytes per second, right? And we're getting close to a thousand or 900 megabytes per second read. So this is about the speed that they were quoting on their website. This is exactly what we wanted to see. So the NVMe SSD speed on this dock is not necessarily the fastest one that is available. However, this dock offers so many type of connectivity that if you want to have an extra storage built into a dock itself, I think it makes a lot of sense. If you're a photographer, if you're a video pro working with 4K or anything below that, you should be okay using this dock without any problems. However, if you want to work with like an 8K file or you need a faster drive in general that is faster than the one gigabyte per second or close to it read and write, then you probably will have to look at an external enclosure. Overall, in using this in my workflow, I really enjoy the dock. I really think that it has a lot to offer. And so far, being able to charge my device or when I come back to my workstation and I just have to plug in these two cables and everything is all linked up for me, I think this is a huge convenient factor that when you're looking for a dock, this is something that definitely should not be overlooked. So anyway, I really enjoy using this dock. It is a great addition for anyone that has a new 14 or 16 inch MacBook Pro or any of the other Macs out there if you want to link it up to multiple displays. If you have any questions or comments, leave them below. Give this a like, subscribe and hit on the bell if you're new. And remember, in what we trust.